we're looking, we're going to look at the two axes. We're looking at a relationship between, and this is very well done, Rain, population. year and population. What trend, and again, if you weren't in class yesterday, we use this language. You have to understand the language you're using. What is the trend? Is it positive or is it negative? Positive. It's positive. Is it upward or downward? Upward. I want you to write this down beside the graph or somewhere on the page. There is a positive upward trend. So because it's positive and upward, that means that as year is increasing, as time is passing, what happens to the population? It increases. So every year that passes, the population in this town gets larger. And the graph, and let's follow the scale 2005, 2010, 2015. Can we make a prediction? It's probably going to be around here, correct? If we're following the same trend? Yes. So that means that what would the prediction be? I mean, sorry, what would the population be in 2000 and, well, because we don't have that data. In 2015, what do you think the population was? Around 55,000 because it's a population in thousands, around 55,000 people. What about in 2020, in the future? It will be higher, so what do you think it might be? Maybe somewhere around here. Good, maybe around 60,000 people. If this follows the same trend, we can make predictions about the future. We can say that in 2020, this town might have a population of 60,000. Is that going to be necessarily true? Not for sure, but if we're looking at a trend, it seems to have happened every single year. Every year, the population increased. We're going to look at the first example, number one. The table shows data for the winning Olympic times for the 100 meter sprint. Did anyone ever do a 100 meter sprint in track and field in elementary school? Okay, we're looking at a comparison between the year of the Olympics. How often does the Olympics happen? Every four, Every four years. So we're looking at data from the Olympics starting in 1968 all the way up to 2012. This is real data. Shh. The record for the 100 meter sprint is given. We're given the time. Just looking at the table, looking at this table here, can anybody tell me what year had the fastest time? Who broke, what year broke the record? Okay, so 2012, the record was 9.63 seconds. Was that the fastest time? Yes. Okay. Um, in 1968, the time was, the record was 9.95 seconds. And then what happened the next Olympics? Did they beat the record? No. No. Did they beat the record in 76? No, no. In 1980, did they beat the record? No. Did they beat the record in 1984? No. no. Did they beat the record in 1988? Yes. yes. So it took them from 1968 to 1988 to have the record beaten. And then in 2012, it was the fastest time. Do you think that the winning time for the 100-meter sprint in 2016, so if we were to extend this and predict it for what it was for 2016, do you think it's likely to be less than 9.6 seconds? If it follows a trend, would we predict that it would be less than that? If it's following the same trend, is the line going down? Yeah. Yes, but in reality, we just looked it up. Was it less? What was his time? Usain Bolt had a record of 9.81 seconds. So he actually was just a little bit off of the trend. He was not as fast as the person who ran in 2012. So we're looking at a comparison between year and time in seconds. Oops, seconds. Okay, so what, do you, what would you say the trend is in this data? Downward, <coughs> downward negative trend. I want you to write this down even if you didn't graph it. Now in this case, because it's going down, it's actually better in this situation because the smaller the number, the better the speed, right? Yes. The faster they go. 
So how would you describe this relationship in your own words? In general, as years are passing, this the record is getting better. They're getting faster. But sometimes we can have outlying data. Maybe one year, the this one. In that year, it didn't really seem to follow the trend. It sh probably should have been around here if it followed the trend. But maybe that year, the person who was competing just had a really crappy run, race, right? It's not... Just because there's a trend, sometimes not every single point will follow that trend. This is the outlying data, okay? There could be other circumstances that prevent things from following the trend. We talked about that. If, if the length of snowstorm, I'm going to use the arrow for increases, then... The depth of the snowstorm increases or decreases? Okay, so if the length of the snowstorm increases, so the longer the snowstorm, as time passes and a snowstorm goes on and on and on, we get more snow. The depth of the snow increases. Okay, so like you just said, the longer you travel, the less gas you're going to have in your tra tank. So if a car travels farther, then the amount of gas in the tank decreases. So you might have a graph that looks something like this. If we're looking at the distance you travel and the amount of gas, would my line be upward or downward? downward. Yes? Downward. downward, of course. If you're traveling farther, your gas is decreasing. This would be a negative downward trend. Okay. So hourly rate of pay for a carpenter and years of experience. As the more experience you have, so as your experience increases, they would probably get paid higher. So the graph would be upward or downward? Downward. Upward. As years experience increase, your pay increases. The air pressure of a tire. So maybe we would lo be looking at time. As time passes, if there's a leak in the tire, what do you think would happen to the air pressure? Will it increase or decrease? Will air escape? So is it going to increase or decrease? Okay, so as time increases, the air pressure in a tire will decrease. This would be a downward trend. Downward negative, yes.